Yeah, I'm just trying to get comfortable. <laughs> so, does this look weird on camera if I sit like this? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little too casual. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Rory Kagan and I am here with Nick Schweitzer. And we are two of the founders of Grow Strong Industries and welcome to our first podcast. Uh, we're still trying to work out the title <laughs> and things like that, but we wanted to uh, get these discussions started as soon as possible. And for our very first episode, we want to field a question that we receive an awful lot. And that is, why do you not use all white diodes in your LED grow light fixtures like everybody else in the marketplace. Interesting topic. A uh, very and interesting topic. And we do topic. get this over and over and over from our customers. Uh, you know, as everybody knows, the industry has been flooded with white light diode companies. If you go to an MJ Biz show, it's all you see. They all look the exact same. It's all usually 4,000 Kelvin diodes uh, with a little bit of 660 or 680 red sprinkled in. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was a very interesting turn in the industry. Uh, and, you know, I want to start by saying not one that was bad for the industry, because I think that it did do some good in terms of where we needed to end up as a spectrum. But I think it overshot the target a little bit. You remember what the first white light fixture was to hit the marketplace? I do. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not here to say our competitors' names yeah, or put right. anybody on a, uh, you know, on blast. Um, but I do. I was trying yeah. to trick you there. I was trying, yeah. trying no, to get I know, you to say I know, I know who it was. Yeah, I mean, there were some good things that came along with that fixture. You know, it, it primarily changed the format. It brought the bars in, which is what we see in the marketplace today. But, you know, there's issues with that, that spec. Yeah, I mean, it kept going with the same theory that we had with the XL1000, which was to widen the footprint by 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 spreading those diodes out over the course of a bigger fixture right yeah and so they did do a, a good job in finding a format that worked where they could push those diodes out even further and really get to the edges of like a four by four or five by five footprint right so there were plenty of good things that came out of it um you know one of the you know odd things about it is you know, they, 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 a lot of companies put on this very scientific hat in terms of these grow lights that they make when really all they did was take a white light LED that had been being used in automotive lighting, architectural lighting, uh, you know, everything that you can think of outside of horticulture that had this broad spectrum on it and threw it in a light and was like, wow, we solved the spectrum puzzle. We're right? bioengineering. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, 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 and at the same time, what they were able to do with that was put a lot more light out from that fixture because those diodes that had been being used in all those industries before were very efficient at what they did. They had a very high efficacy, which is taking wattage from the wall and turning that into photons. But what that kind of neglects is turning that into usable photons for the light, right? And so the reason that light looks white to our eyes, because it has a lot of yellow and green and amber light inside of it, what used to be lux, right? Which is a, a measurement that if anybody used in the- Lumens. It, it, it lux and lumens, right? Yeah. If anybody used that in horticultural lighting now, they'd get laughed at, right? But that's mainly the spectrum that you're seeing in those lights is because that's why it appears white to the human eye. Well, that's what we perceive as brightness. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I find that part of it very peculiar because the reason LED technology uh, is so valuable is that you, we now have the ability to hone in on the exact spectrums that the plant wants in, in a very efficient way, right? But with these white diodes, what, what, what the industry has done is basically replicated the inefficiency of the technology that came before, the sure. HPSs and the metal halides. It's like we're now delivering that same spectrum that we got away from because it was inefficient in LED form. Yeah, and that's not to say that LEDs aren't more efficient at creating that spectrum, but there's still that waste inside of it, right? Yeah. There's still that waste inside of it, and you can clearly see that. Um, I was just at a commercial grower today who's testing the X2, loves them, and uh, we were talking about leaf surface temperature. And he takes all of those readings because he's you know very interested, very, very geeky with all the data. 
And he was taking measurements off of a white light LED that he had been using and then off our X2. And it was literally like a 10 degree difference in leaf surface temperature, right? The only thing that's gonna create that radiant heat on the leaf surface is wasted photons, right? If the plant isn't absorbing those photons, it's gonna be wasted as heat energy. So you can see it in that reading that those photons are, are being wasted as heat energy. So you think that you have a light that's giving you a efficacy rating of 2.7, 2.8, which a lot of those aren't even true, but you're not getting that full efficacy rating because the plant's not utilizing those photons. And so it was, from an industry standpoint, it was an easy turn to make a white light LED. You could get the diodes for cheap because they're, they're mass produced. Used across industry. Yeah, they're, they're used across industry. The reason they're used across industry or, or, or the, the benefit of them being used across industry is that they're putting a lot of R&D dollars into those diodes. They're making them highly efficient, which is why efficacy started to be the one measurement that all the companies were like, no, you need to look at this, you need to look at this, right? Because they were winning that race. Um, and in, misdirection, in, really, when you think about yeah, it. For sure. Hey, look over 100%. here, efficacy. Look how look how efficient this diode is. I literally heard somebody at MJ Biz come up to us and say that one of the booths that was a white light LED company told them that spectrum does not matter. And it's just silly. It's just silly. I mean, it's preposterous. And, and you know, it's such an interesting place that the industry has gotten to because that's the majority of voices now that consumers hear. Yeah. And so it becomes easier to believe, no, like, even though it's like such a ridiculous statement that efficacy is, the spectrum doesn't matter when you're growing plants. I mean, it's it's absolutely preposterous, but when you're hearing it from multiple companies, yeah, it takes over. It starts yeah. to seem believable, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, on the face of it, I mean, it's if you just said spectrum doesn't matter to anybody, uh, you know, they, they would laugh at you. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the final thing that really let that spectrum catch on was on the other side of it, the grower side of it, it is an easy spectrum to work under, right? It's natural light. You can see the plants as they are. You don't need color correcting glasses, although you still should be wearing glasses in, a, in a, an environment like that. But that was another thing that just kind of allowed them to run away with this false claim was that they were easy to work under. And so it just kind of blossomed from there. And so the reason why we don't use all white light diodes like a lot of those companies is because we don't believe in throwing the kitchen sink in terms of spectrum at the plants and they'll absorb, you know, we'll throw enough photons at it so that it actually does what it's supposed to do. But then you have all these wasted photons in the yellow, green and, and amber range. So what we've decided to do is use a more targeted spectrum which we are going to go in depth on in future episodes. Um, we just kind of wanted to touch on the white light thing in this one, um, you know, but we wanted to keep the soul of what LED lighting was when it first came out, which was utilizing spectrum and efficient diodes to come out with the most efficient grow light that you could possibly make. Yeah, we're a plant first company and our interest is in getting the best results out of grows. And so that is that is what how and why our fixtures were developed the way that they are. Um, and if that's going to increase our costs, it's going to increase our overhead, you know, so be it. You know, that that's that our interest is in, in just making these plants as big as possible. And really, you know, when you talk about efficacy uh, and pump that as a spec, it's, it's very misleading, right? Because like you said, it has no bearing on what that plant is actually going to absorb, none at all. So even though, you know, that diode is very good at turning energy into photons, those, are, those photons are just wasted, right? And so what's, what's the true efficacy of that? And we've seen the specs evolve through the years with LED lights, and I think we'll continue to see them evolve, right? Because it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about lumens, and lumens was actually on the box of grow lights yeah. as a spec yeah. completely went away some people we still have it in their name of their <laughs> <laughs> i thought we weren't going to go there <laughs> hey there could be there could be several out there i didn't say a thing yeah and so i mean and then you know now we have uh ppfd which actually you know takes readings inside of the photosynthetic spectrum where the action is but i think that we'll continue to see that evolve because yeah. we do need readings that speak to how well that light actually addresses 
plant growth and how much waste there is within that photosynthetic spectrum. So, you know, to say, look over here and look how high our spec rating is, it's actually pretty misleading and it's, it's surprising um, that the industry has, has gone there en masse. Um, yeah, we need plant efficacy, not lab efficacy. Plant right. efficacy, yeah. I, maybe we could be the ones to develop that. I mean, because literally like up to 20, 30% of what these white diodes are putting out is not going to be absorbed by the plant. And that's very significant. Um, you know, we like to say that the, our, our, competi our competitors brag about their efficacy. Uh, our customers brag about their results. <laughs> Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that kind of wraps up our take on the white light side of things. Um, like I said, wraps up the science. In, in future episodes, uh, we're going to go into the targeted spectrum side of things, which is what our lights utilize, and really kind of try to start to break down the science and you know teach you guys why spectrum does matter and why you should be weary of just looking at efficacy ratings uh, to judge all grow lights by. I mean, I was even going to like start by saying like, first and foremost, like by buying Gorilla Grow Tents, you're supporting people in the U.S. Like you're supporting American, an American company, right? We have, uh, you know, we have a, a warehouse in California. The, our whole entire staff is here in California, you know, so, I mean, something like that. I mean, I guess we could research it a little bit more, but... You know, more like, you know, the, we, these were Gorilla Grow Tents were, were, were purpose innovated because of the cheap tents uh, that were overrunning the marketplace. You know, we, we had firsthand experience with those because our original brand, Super Closet, you made, we did kits. And so we were reliant on them. And man, we got the customer service calls over and over again. There's, I got pin leaks, my tent collapsed, and we were just inundated with issues with these things. Uh, why is the porthole over here? You know, and it's just, it was, it was such a nightmare to manage the support for these other tent brands. And we're like, we could do this better. And so we looked at everything that was wrong in the marketplace with the existing tents. And we fixed them all with the Gorilla Grow Tent. We made it sturdier. We made it taller. We put the ports in the right place. We eliminated light leaks or put flaps over the zippers, nice industrial size zippers that would last a long time. The tents that you see on Amazon are the ones that we're including in our systems back in 2010. And if you look at them, they're all the same with a different brand name up in the right hand corner. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It's, yeah. um, we could take it there too, uh, but uh, you know these are these these tent brands are all different brands. They all are coming from overseas companies that are sending them directly to Amazon facilities, and uh, you know they're they're making it seem as though they're an American company, um, but they're really not. It's yeah, just, I mean, I think it's a good I think it's a good opportunity to kind of start bashing that whole side of things because yeah. I think we need to be like I mean. Honestly, we could have a whole entire episode based on that. Yeah. Like, you know, what Amazon is doing to industry in general, right? Like yeah. not just the grow industry, but all industries, you know, you're basically cutting out every single person in the middle that is eventually going to lead to worldwide collapse. Yes, we have a fucking conspiracy podcast now, suddenly. Oh, it's I've always be so wanted good. a conspiracy podcast. Fuck yeah, you did. When do we get to talk about lizard people? <laughs> I think our other business partners are lizard people. What's that? You have arrived. Oh, <laughs> have I, I mean, I honestly think putting some of that shit in, like, I mean, that's what people would like laugh. About, I mean, I, you know, you know it, it's, uh, are we, are we filming now? Are we running? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You should always tell them. Okay. All right, good. Let it run. Let it run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. I won't ask anymore. I'll just assume. I just want you to be safe and feel safe. You're going to have a video tomorrow on YouTube. It's like, the lizard people. <laughs> the lizard people. It's I'm a lizard a, person. Just, I'm a lizard <laughs> person. I drink baby blood. Um... Yeah, I mean, it is really fucked up what's going on on, on Amazon right now, and most people don't know. I mean, uh, Amazon actively solicited uh, contract manufacturers overseas and said, you don't need uh, American businesses to work through. Just send your stuff straight to you us. And guys. you know what? What's that? I said, you don't need those guys. You don't need, you don't need <laughs> Americans. Just skip them.
Just you just need their customers. You just need <laughs> and their we consumers. Have all those. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, one of the things that I did want to say about that is it going to be a nightmare for him to edit. <laughs> He's just got to go back and find all this shit. Um, was that, you know, what the, the end result of, of consumers making that choice is like, you know, buying something that's good enough because it's cheap. Uh, obviously, being in California, making quality products, employing, uh, you know, 45 people in this state, like our overhead's a lot bigger, right? And it, and it causes... Uh, companies, similarly situated companies to ours, you know, not, not that we're in this situation or anything, but it causes them to struggle as a business and they'll eventually have to succumb to this, these cheap products that are, you know, competing from overseas. And so what's the end result of that? The end result is that the consumer is only left with crap. Like they're only left with cheap goods. And there, there is no premium option even available to them. And so I, I think, you know, what's going on across the industry where, you know, it's just being overrun with real cheap equipment that's, that's being advertised well, you know, it's, you know, kind of misleading, uh, is, is basically, you know, bringing the, the, the industry down overall. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But. Yeah, I mean, it comes in waves. I mean, we've been in this industry uh, now for almost two decades. Um, and I've seen this trend over and over and over where people gravitate towards cheap tents. They see how easily they break and fall apart. That news spreads. Then everybody starts trending back towards premium tents like ours that don't fail and do have all these useful features that we have designed into them based on the pain points of those tents. And, uh, you know, there's a resurgence in premium products, which should you th would think should last and should, you know, should, should be there. And then you see another another resurgence back towards the cheap products. And then eventually same thing happens where they start to see that they break and they fail and they come back. So it's really kind of this short term memory of the American public uh, that leads to people ever going back to cheap stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're going to buy a grow tent off of Amazon. It's going to break within the first four to six months. I mean, I've had it happen many, many times before we started Gorilla Grow Tent. And what am I going to end up doing? I'm going to end up owning three tents over the course of a two year span that are going to end up costing me more than a Gorilla Grow Tent that would put up with it. Oh, yeah. I year mean, after we, year after year. We hear it all the time. It's, oh, I bought this other tent and, uh, and it fell apart. Now I bought a Gorilla and I've had it for five years. I've had it for 10 years. You know, you just, you kind of wish that people didn't have to make that mistake, right? And, you know, the thing is, is you could have cheap, even the cheap products are still an investment, you know? So I feel bad for people because they're getting duped. You know, they want to get in, they want to do it, you know, at the, at the lowest possible, uh, uh, at cost and you know these kind of fly by night companies uh you know they they make it seem like yeah you can get in and get good results uh you know at this price point but really they're just taking advantage of people because that's not going to last them and it's really even though it was less of an investment going in uh it, it turns out to be wasted money uh, and then you have to go back and get something that's actually going to be quality for you. And, you know, I think one thing that people really don't seem to to grasp out of the gate. Is as that the reviews are fake? The, well, yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on the reviews. It's uh, I mean, it's so obnoxious. They all have four and a half star ratings. Yeah. And right. if that if it goes down to four stars, then boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden it's back to four and a half. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a thousand more reviews overnight. <laughs> Uh, I wonder how that works exactly, but uh, in any case, you know, it, there's, y you could grow plants with a light bulb, but they're not going to, they're not going to be great, right? And so people don't realize that, you know, buying grow equipment's kind of like buying a TV. You know, you could go to Best Buy and you could buy one for a hundred bucks. That's going to be like 540p or 720p, right? Is that good? Uh, that's kind of dated as far as technology is <laughs> okay. concerned. You can watch TV. It's better than a tube TV. I'll okay. tell you that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But it's not like a 4K 2160p. Yeah. And so you could watch TV on that 720p. Yeah. But you can, it's not going to be the same experience as watching on a 2160. Yeah. And it's the same for grow equipment. You know, it's like you could grow with that, you know, aluminum 
LED strip light panel and you'll get something out of it. Yeah. But it's not the same, uh, not, not even in the same like planet, on the same planet as, well, as what you get out of a kind mean, of LED it's like, I mean, a, a lot of things, you know, you get <clears throat> what you pay for, you get out of it what you put into it, right? Yeah. Grow equipment is absolutely like that. If you can create the right environment with the right equipment, you're going to get two, three, sometimes four times the biomass that you were going to get with the cheap, you know, with the, uh, you know, good equipment like ours than you would with the cheap stuff. So it's just not even worth investing in the cheap stuff if you're not going to get that same payload out of it. And that's weight, that's quality, that's, you know, that's quality everything, right? It's huge. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you really do get what you pay for in growing equipment. And you know, it's going to, I mean, it, the experience growing too. I mean, this is, a, this is a hobby for a lot of people. It's something that you, that you want to enjoy, right? And you should enjoy. And so you'll find that you just have a much more pleasurable experience if you have equipment that you can rely on and performs as advertised, right? right, right. Um, so, it, you know, if you're dealing with the headaches of failing equipment or equipment that's not really producing in the way that you want it to, it's, it's just, it's not fun anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And that's not to mention, that you can't get anybody on the phone for any of these Amazon companies, no. right? No. Grow Strong Industries, we'll get on the phone, we'll teach you how to grow. If you don't know how to grow with our equipment yet, we have people, pros who have been growing for years on standby waiting to talk to you and teach you and help you grow and get the most out of your experience with our products. Any of those companies on Amazon, you're not getting a hold of anybody. You're probably emailing them and you're probably emailing them because your tent's now broken or your light's now broken. And what do they do? I mean, like I've heard of people getting burned and not even getting product back. Um, obviously, it's Amazon, so you can return it. But now what? Now you don't have anything, you know? And so it's uh, it, it's it's uh, it, it's really it's it's kind of a bunk deal. I think even if you did get somebody on the phone, they, they wouldn't be able to help you out with your grow. I mean, based on the way that they're designing their products, I don't think they know anything Ooh. about growing. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> so, yeah. What else can we talk about with grow tents? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm glad that you mentioned the, the, the grow support because that's something that's always been very important to us. You know, really the purchase is just the start of your experience with Grow Strong Industries because the, the whole thing is we want you to get good results and there are variables and growing can be confusing. God, if you've ever Googled how to grow online, you could see the amount of conflicting information out there like grow science and you know, everybody's got an opinion on it and it can become very confusing and overwhelming. And while there are, you know, there's, there's, there's things that you have to attend to, um, it's, it can be simplified. And, and we specialize in doing that, especially, you know, as it comes to the use of, uh, of our products, right? And so, you know, I, I know that it's something our team takes great pride in helping people out with and, and they'll sit, Super Closet uh, support will sit there with, with people on, on the phone for hours. Yeah, look, uh, just, I mean, it's fun to get somebody who is struggling with growing to a successful point. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's a joyful moment when you learn how to garden correctly and you have that first successful harvest, like that is a moment of pride in your life and we feel it too right when we help you to get there like that's awesome oh yeah it's fucking awesome you can believe that one out <laughs> um, you know and so it's like yeah I mean we enjoy doing that that's what you get when you buy products from an American company like, well, not all American companies, but a company like ours, you get that support, you get that care, you become part of our family and you get to the point where you're having successful harvests. So you can either buy cheap shit off of Amazon and have shitty harvests. And then buy it again in three months. And then buy it again it in fails. three months. Or you can come to Grow Strong Industries, buy quality equipment, Your forever have equipment. lifetime grow support from our team who helps you succeed grow the first time. Quality shit. So choice is yours. Yeah. <laughs> the choice is yours. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. <laughs> All right. Yeah. High five. Yeah. All right. Are we talking about my knee yet? So what happened to your knee? 
Uh, I injured it uh, going down the slide uh, with with my son. Mm. And this was this was not down like a slide, like a playground slide. Playground slide, mm-hmm. and this wasn't like was a it? like a regular like playground slide. No extreme. No, it wasn't like high. it wasn't the you know it didn't have like that hump in it. it or the weight. really high. No, this was like <laughs> you know ten feet with the little dome around it, wide, you know, close to the ground. And uh, yeah. I mm. just uh, I blew out my knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure what happened. I didn't feel an impact or anything, but man, oh man, I was definitely on the ground afterwards. I, yeah, it might have been we were biking in South Lake the day before, and so maybe like it was just like a straw that broke the camel's back, <laughs> sure. as opposed to my muscles just atrophying and deteriorating yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not to the point where I can't here. ride a slide. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really want to talk about my knee. I was just well, you just did. I know. <laughs> it's, we're gonna we're gonna get to know each other in here. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about you. This is a mysterious <laughs> business partner I've had for ten years. Um, dear Doctor Grosjean, <laughs> <laughs> he's the one they call Doctor Grosjean. He's the one to make it grow all right. right. He's the one to call Dr. Grove you Strong. He's going to be your master grower, huh? Oh, oh you want a question? Me. You addressed me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between liquid nutrients and powdered nutrients? Well, Rory. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I'm guessing one has liquid. And the other one's dry. Yeah. yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Can you verify that? <laughs> if I open a bottle of that lotus, will there be liquid in there? Why do you so- <laughs> Why do some nutrients have 12 parts and others have only 3? Is that really equivalent? <laughs> well, are these real customers? <laughs> Three does not equal 12. Kay Anderson asks, <laughs> what's that? Three, is, does three equal 12? Can three really equal 12? <laughs> it is divisible by. Ah, yes. But it's not equal to. Is, is three four times um, as effective as 12? Um, what else we got on here? Okay, here's a good one. What are some of your favorite tips for a beginner grower? Just starting out. Mm. I gotta wipe the tears away from my eyes before I start. <laughs> what are you talking crying again. for? I'm you so sad? happy. No, I'm happy. Oh, you have. Oh, right. tears of yeah, joy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, the, the fact that you and I there's are an emoji here for that. Doing this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. it's, it makes me happy too. Uh, tips for first time growers, man. Uh, there's a lot of them. Um, I would say first and foremost, uh, do your research, um, which can be done in many, many places. Uh, online is a good resource, but as you said in one of our previous videos, uh, that can be rather confusing and all over the place. A lot like of anything online these days, and right? Misinformation. Um, picking up a good book like Jorge Cervantes's book. Um, uh, Ed Rosenthal's books, all those are great resources uh, to get to know how to grow. Um, or you can call us at Grow Strong Industries that was and talk be to my our badass team of Grow Pros. Yeah, um, that's another way. Um, but you know, getting a whole overview of like what growing is all about from start to finish and how the plant works and you know photo periods and all that kind of stuff like that's the number one thing, right? Mm-hmm. If you're a beginner grower pick up a book, read that thing cover to cover, and then start to grow. Don't go into it with no knowledge at all and then try to catch up as you go. Yeah. Second thing would probably be try not to overcomplicate things in the beginning, right? Start small, start in a grow tent. It's a nice, easy enclosure. You don't have to drill holes in your walls and put hooks in the ceilings and all that other stuff. It's a nice, easy way to kind of get started. Uh, You know, the super closet is another great product for that. The metal cabinets that we sell, it's an all-in-one kind of uh, enclosure. It's got the light, the fans, the filters, the hydroponic systems. It's just an easy way to kind of get your hands wet with growing. Um, you know, again, we offer lifetime support, lifetime growth support on any of those cabinets. We can walk you through any of the processes. 
but it's just don't overcomplicate things. Don't go too big at first. Don't try to grow too many plants at first. Just kind of keep it simple in the beginning. Get your feet underneath variables, you and then yeah. build from that base knowledge. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I mean, no, can, you know, knowing what you want to get out of it, I think is is important too, right? Like, are you looking to just grow some medicine for yourself? Are you looking to grow, you know, fruits and veggies? Are you going to be providing to other people? So, you know, once you have an idea of how much you're trying to produce, it's really going to help you narrow down, you know, how big your grow space Within is, is going to be. Within realistic expectations. We, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cause, yeah, Because that's what we see quite a bit is customers with unrealistic expectations. <laughs> There's I want mismatch. two pounds yeah. and I want to give, you know, I've got a bunch of medical friend, you know, uh, patient friends and I want to give this all away. And can I get that out of your super box? You no, know? no, no, you can't. no, you can't. And yeah, so you can't have that mismatch out of the gate. Um, I mean, you know, I have a, the, a, the superstar set up uh, at the house and I, I love it. And it, and it really does make it all. But... She, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> it could be a, a tiny source of friction, but uh, but she, <laughs> she certainly appreciates the fruits of my labor. Uh, and so that, that keeps it in operation. But I mean, it really is, it's simple. And it's, you know, I, I've had it for so long long and it, I just it's uh, it, I, I love the hobby you know it, it's each each grow is is different and it's kind of like my Zen you know it's yeah. uh, you just go out there take care of the plants and you know really it's uh, sometimes I wish it was more maintenance because the cabinet really kind of uh, it does the work in fact the less I tinker the better it seems to do which is a little bit uh, of a bruise to the ego. Well, but. I mean, I was going to say that, you know, you can, you, there's opposite sides of the spectrum of care. You know, you can either ignore your garden and problems can get out of hand because you don't notice them. And then I've also seen people smother their garden, right? Yeah. They check on it too much. They're opening the door and letting light in. It's the dark cycle. They're worrying about things. Every little, you know, speck they see on a leaf, they spray IPMs and they just kind of like, you know, they over love their, their that, doesn't, that doesn't sound like me. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a smother. Maybe I am. Yeah. You just, you know, me. and so it's, fi <laughs> it's finding a good balance of, Knowing the status of your plants every day, right? Checking them, making sure that the medium is, you know, correctly moist or that the, your drippers are still working, making sure that you don't have bugs looking under leaves. You know, plants want interaction and that's what I don't agree with this whole automation uh, movement that's happening. I mean, automation is good to a point, but you mm -hmm. still need humans to grow plants, yeah. right? A plant is a living thing. Like you have to interact with it. It wants interaction. You need to check up on it to make sure that there's no bugs and mildew and everything else, right? And so it, it's a fine balance. It's a fine balance. You don't want to just leave the cabinet closed, which you can. I've seen a super closet be closed up for a week and a half. Somebody left, you went on vacation and came back and it was completely fine a week and a half later with the hydroponic system and so you can do that i, um, I remember but i don't it, recommend it. a deluxe grow that i had a yeah that was ago. you that's who i was talking yeah. about well i mean we do hear we hear that a lot you know but there's i'll never forget it because i was struggling with this thing and i just could not get things right and i like coming up on a vacation i left for i think it was two weeks <laughs> i came back and they they were like the like the happy they were so happy filling up the entire cabinet they yeah they're like, like we're not feet. getting smothered anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that that hurt, <laughs> but I was happy. So it was like a pleasure pain thing. But yeah, um, yeah, so, I mean, you find that you want to be looking at it more than you have to because it's really remarkable how quickly oh, uh, for sure. they grow, especially in hydro. You 100%. Know? It's like you're you're getting good growth uh, on, on a daily basis. Growing you know, is so. an astonishing thing. I yeah. mean, it is it is awe inspiring. I've been doing it for over twenty years, and I still get that feeling when I walk in a grow room of like. Oh man, this is like amazing. You well, know, you're I mean, seeing that growth and everything else. Your so. grow rooms are ridiculous. Like I've never <laughs> seen a canopy so even and perfect. It's just like, it, it's like magazine. Like <laughs> it doesn't, you're like, that's not real. That's gotta be plastic. It's uh, it's well, it's, thanks. Yeah, no, it's, it's a long, long career of, of perfecting it. Yeah. Uh, and neuroses. Yes. <laughs> but not smothering. But not smothering. But not roses. smothering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. just the right mix. <laughs> just the right, the perfect mix. Yeah. So, you know, and, and for beginner growers, um, you know, I, I like you're going to mess up. <laughs> like you're going to have pitfalls. You're going to get mites and not notice them and they're going to take over your garden. You might get powdery mildew. Like it happens, right? 
And so the thing is, don't get discouraged by that. Jump back on the horse when it happens and just refine your process as you go. Yeah. If you get bugs, it's because you didn't check early enough and take care of them when there was just a few in there. I've gotten and clones. They, and, and they spread. Sorry, right, yeah, you can get clones with bugs on them, right? And so it's, it's, it, it's a learning process. And every single grower that I know, as talented uh, as they can be, have gone through all of those same pitfalls and all those same struggles. And honestly, it's the best way to learn. Because, I mean, you know, until you've gone through those hardships, you don't, you know, you don't fully realize how quickly they can happen or how to fully take care of them. So you're going to hit those roadblocks, but just keep going uh, and, and learn from your lessons and, you know, add that into your regiment. I mean, that's another thing, having a, a, a very nicely laid out calendar where it shows watering schedule, it shows feed schedule, it shows any major events that you had, such as understory clean outs, or I added a little bit extra grow this time because the leaves were looking a little pale or whatever it might be, right? Record all of that on a calendar so you can go back and look at it in a day-to-day -day kind of thing. Yeah. And you can see maybe where you maybe made a mistake or where you actually made you know, turn something around and caught it before it got too worse. And then you can implement that into the next calendar. So yeah. keeping a calendar is very important. Yeah. I mean, having a nice clean space uh, and a contained space and a clean environment that you have your grow space in those are the, all that stuff will help you mitigate the chance of, of having uh, the grow go wrong. Um, but it does happen. And, and yeah, like you said, living through an experience like that is really the best, best experience that you could get, uh, as far as, uh, you know, growing your skill set. Um, what else? Oh, you know what I tried for the first time, uh, in the superstar yeah, is auto. I thought this was going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I tried for the first time? I think you might enjoy it too. <clears throat> was it? <laughs> um, it, yeah. <laughs> autos. autos autos yeah yeah i picked a nice auto that does it doesn't get too um too tall so it was perfect for the super closet i just had four of them in uh soil yeah and uh yeah, i mean it was uh, pretty amazing hmm. like they yeah they they grew right to spec and uh produced great a great harvest you know, so it was really, really easy. I liked it. Nice. Yeah. They, I they have to say, of, autos are one thing that I've never really messed around with. I've always done photo period specific yeah. strains, um, but uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, maybe yeah, we should I find mean, somebody out in the crowd that grows autos in their cabinet. And they work really well influence. with the smaller cabinets. You know, it's uh, it, it, it What's was the a good company match. Uh, seed company you're using? Uh, the, this last round was Mephisto. Mephisto, Mephisto seeds. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, the strain was. Um, Strawberry nuggets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I have some Straba the Hut uh, <laughs> at home that I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting in the ground. And it's, for people uh, who don't know this guy, he loves anything limited edition. Limited <laughs> edition. Right. If there's a drop for something online, this is the guy who's in line for it. If it's so Mephesto Seeds yeah, does that, of. right? They have like a... They like do. a limited edition drop that they do. They drop their their seeds uh, on Monday uh, Mondays at, at noon. It's and, like strawberry. And it's the a, hut. a limited uh, menu. <laughs> Strava the Hut is OG Skywalker uh, crossed with strawberry nuggets. Um, so it sounds uh, the force is strong with, with that them. one. I'd yeah. imagine. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to try it. But yeah, I have more. I have enough seeds because of the way that they drop them. I have, I have enough to go seeds well into to, Armageddon. To, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 doomsday or when it comes coming. to to seeds. <laughs> it is Get your super closets now. It does feel it's like coming. it's coming, doesn't it? The well world done. is on the precipice of collapse. Do we always have to do an outro to these things? Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> Smash the subscribe button. <laughs> Hit the like button like share it what's the other one sharing ding the bell is carrying. <laughs> ding the ding the bell so we it's like would... if they subscribe and get notifications so ding in the bell is like you set the notifications yeah. so like like you'll find out as soon as we drop something new you could also Limited watch this video edition. 10 times in a row yeah which we recommend because <laughs> you pick up a lot more the second yeah you might have missed something. you might have missed something I'm, in fact, I'm, I, I know you missed something. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> you tuned out at one point, probably, when I was talking about Star Wars. I, I did, didn't talk I about did Star too, Wars. So. <laughs> yeah, it's natural. 
It happens. <laughs> we should uh, talk about drug experiences. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We should eat some mushrooms and watch Pee-wee's Playhouse. Mecca, lecca, hi, mecca, hi, ni ho. Large Marge, the ghost truck driver, I uh, kind of freaked me out when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit scary, <laughs> but not Pee-wee for some reason. Pee-wee, you're cool. Pee-wee's hey. cool. I was Pee Wee Herman for Halloween one year. Carried a, a boombox on. Dun -dun 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 -dun. It was a great concert. Nice. Yeah, can we cut that out? <laughs> <laughs> cut. Take care of that and post. All right, we're good, yeah? Yeah. Are we done?